name of your conference is Urban Water, Urban Environment and Gesture of Our Political Ecology. So what is it? Urban Environment Justice or Political Ecology? Well, it's in a way both. What I was trying to say is that we do know that worldwide that there are extraordinary social ecological injustices. This is a conference about water, and we do know that water is causing the death of millions of people every year. It's number one cause of premature mortality in the world. It's a great example uh, of the extraordinary social ecological inequalities and injustices that are there. I have unlimited access to cheap and clean water, other people do not and cannot even survive because of that. Now as an academic, intellectual thinking about these conditions, I would argue there are two ways of understanding. Three ways really, three ways to be absolutely honest. Uh, but the third one I'm not particularly interested in, though I did talk about it in my, in my presentation. There is, um, first of all, to start with the last, the notion of sustainability. Yes. This is now the great mantra that more inclusive and socio-ecologically harmonious, sustainable cities and communities can be built, um, organized around this notion of sustainability that no one disagrees with. I haven't come across a single person yet who is against sustainability. Al Gore defends sustainability. George Bush, my 15-year-old son, a great sustainability activist, etc. So no one is against it. But I would argue that much of this sustainability argument, although not all, but much of it is one that does not consider these questions of social ecological inequalities and injustice as the key problem, which they are for me. So there are two other perspectives that do for the ground how sustainability cannot be disassociated from questions of justice and inequality. There's one set of uh, uh, thinking and activism that is articulated around what have what people have called environmental justice. This argues that uh, ecological bads, such as toxic sites, nuclear power stations, um, um, polluting industries, are very often sited, located, in areas where you have a high concentration of people of color in the United States, African Americans, um, and indigenous communities in Latin America. Um, poor people, etc. So that, in other words, they argue that in the distribution of socio-ecological amenities, and particularly our shit, do you know where your shit goes to when you flush the toilet? Uh, or predominantly sited and located in communities where you have poorer and less powerful people. Which clearly ingest. Yeah, yeah. Why should they have their my shit in their backyard while well, my backyard is nice and clean, etc.? So it's a question of distribution, of the necessarily negative consequences of our socio-ecological process. Um, and they do fantastic work, some of them. But they but but they concentrate on questions of justice, which is a distributional question. It's a question of fairness, right? We all have to share the burden of the negative externalities of our daily life. And it's unfair and unjust. It's a classic argument that, that liberals uh, uh, mobilize. It is what Marx already called in the 19th century, it's a question of morality. And morality, let's leave that to the bourgeoisie and the elites. It's the elites who always talk about morality and justice. George Bush was a classic example of that, how he uh, argued whatever he was arguing for, whether it was the war in Iraq or uh, uh, climate change, the questions of morality and justice, etc. Actually, the Iraqi war was called infinite justice. So I don't like this word justice very much as a mobilizing 
uh, 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 frame, and I don't like it very much as an analytical uh, frame. My perspective, that the third one that I was talking about, uh, focuses more on, on, on the perspective called political ecology, which is a perspective that is much more concerned with the production, the making of social ecological inequalities. It actually says, we do know that social ecological conditions are unevenly spread. Uh, we know that. Uh, one Google search and I can find any range of inequalities, social environmental inequalities you can think of. We know that. We know that. So my theoretical question is, how did that come about? Yeah. And my answer, or political ecological answer to that question is that the production of socio-ecological inequalities takes place through the particular ways in which social power relationships mobilize particular physical and ecological conditions to produce a configuration that reflects the very power relationships through which the thing came into being. Yeah? Uh, now that opens up a radically different perspective in terms of action. The question then does not any longer is not any longer one of justice and fairness. It's one about equality. You know, that the transformation of social ecological conditions that are unequal can only be transformed by demanding equality in the production in the production of these social ecological configurations. Take Sao Paulo. That's a classic example of a social ecologically extraordinary uneven city. And everyone knows that. Yeah, it's not difficult. You know, we know that. Uh, and we can keep on saying, well, these poor people in the favela, they should have water and sanitation and all that. Of course, they should. Right? How do we get there? How do we make sure that the social ecological assemblage called Sao Paulo in its unevenness becomes produced such that everyone has guaranteed access to a set of ecological services and amenities. That is by demanding political equality. And that's exactly, I would argue, what democracy promises us. Yeah? Democracy as a political, that's to conclude now, the message that I want to do leave people with it that we have to think about what the political is and in particular what the democratic political is which is a system that assumes that we're all equal in the face of inequalities that we all see and know so democracy therefore is a political procedure it's a political act that demands equality not justice equality Justice is for the victim. Justice is that what, what, what you have to do to compensate the victim for the unfairness done to him or her. Uh, I think you have to move away from it to demand an equality with respect to that position. Just one last quick question. Uh, I think we don't really have democracy like in Brazil and many other countries. We have in the uh, environmental pol policy in Brazil, some ways to participate, but it's, uh, it's arranging in a way that we don't really want to participate in the making of these policies. So how can we get to democracy? It's difficult, you know. That's very, very difficult. That's very, very difficult. I don't have an answer to how we get there. But I can identify the moments when it happens. Let me give you an example of a purely political, democratic, political moment that had massive effects. Um, it occurs at moments that those who are not demand to be part. For example, 1955, Montgomery, Alabama, an African-American woman got on the bus and sat herself down on a seat that was reserved for whites only. Montgomery, Alabama, 1955. Here she expressed the fact of exclusion in a society that claimed to be democratic. That claimed that 
the sausage based on the quality of the yeah, yeah, yeah. pudding and the pub on the long yeah. seat. He showed that that was not true. And by doing so, he a movement that we call later on the civil rights movement, that which is a proper political movement that transformed the social landscape of the United States. A proper political moment. I could give you other examples of that. 1981, Lech Walesa, too young perhaps to, uh, to remember who he was, he was the leader of Solidarność in Poland in 1981, became later president of Poland. In 1981 he was union leader and started a strike on the Gdansk shipyards in 1981. Six months later communism was gone in Poland. Proper political moment. That is what we need, I think. And how to think to the ways in which the environment can enter this. That's new. And I have no answer to that. But in order to think about social and ecological justice. We have to think about the political and how that is structured and organized and the role of nature and the environment in it. Thank you very much, Professor. Eric. <laughs>